Hi, Andrew Wolf here. In this video, I'm going to talk about the GI tract anatomy. And in this video, I'm particularly focused on just sort of an average section of the GI tract. And in, for this instance, we'll talk about the jejunum. However, there, there are similarities um, in the GI tract. There are the same basic three layers from uh, the esophagus all the way down to the rectum. Um, so a lot of these, there are small differences in, in each of the layers, but each of the layers are grossly the same. And I'll, I'll talk about the differences in a, in a little bit. Um, but let's start by talking about the, the main layers here this this dark pink layer is the lumen itself so this is the inside of the lumen just to orient you okay and then we have the three main layers this pink section here is the mucosa And this orange section here is the muscularis. And the muscularis, outside of the muscularis, is the serosa. Or mesentery, you can call it either one. Okay, so we'll talk a little bit about each one. Okay, so in the small intestines, if you get a nice close-up view of the small intestines, then you will see that it is made up of villi. And I know this is just a review for you. And I'm going to try to even make this bigger here. So we'll look at one big giant villi. Now these villi are going to be um, contained within them in the mucosa Ar arteries, arterioles, and veins and then they're filled with capillaries. They also have within them what are called Peyer's patches and Peyer's patches are collections of lymph tissue and they're essentially lymph nodes. And the small intestines are filled with them because remember the um, lumen of the intestines are part of the external environment and they're filled with bacteria so in order to protect ourselves um, from bacteria across the unabsorptive surface um, some of the bacteria are going to slip in there. In fact, it's not uncommon. We've got literally billions of bacteria per ml out here. And even if you, you know, only, you know, every hour only have, you know, 1% of bacteria that slip through, you're still going to have millions slipping through. So what does the body do? Well, it has an extensive immune system within the mucosa of the gut. Actually, it's within the mucosa and the submucosa, and then also in the liver itself, which is the next uh, downstream spot in the bloodstream um, to catch um, any bacteria that do slip through. Um, so these Peyer's patches are very important to be aware of, and, uh, and interestingly enough, it's a site of, of some significant uh, pathophysiology because you can have uh, developed lymphoma in this extensive um, lymph network within, within the gut. Um, anyways, that, that's Peyer's patches, and it's just like every other lymph node in the body. It's um, lined with uh, T, T lymphocytes and B lymphocytes and communicates very closely with um, macrophages that are traveling um, through them. Okay, and then on the surface itself, we are going to have enterocytes. And enterocytes have little microvilli on them. And these microvilli, in combination with the villi, increase the absorptive surface by many times. Okay, so we have absorptive 
um, enterocytes. Then we have goblet cells interspersed within here. And goblet cells are called goblet cells because they're roughly shaped like goblets. And goblet cells secrete um, enzymes and mucus. Now in between these, these villi, we actually have these very deep crypts called the crypts of Leverkuhn. And these are important because they have stem cells. And they're sort of pluripotent stem cells that can become um, many types of cells, many types of enterocytes, um, including goblet cells and absorptive enterocytes. And this yellow cell here, which is an enteric endocrine cell that produces um, hormones. And it also creates cells called PANA cells, and I'm not going to talk about their function now, but there's so there's basically four types of stem cells. Um, there are four types of cells that these stem cells can create, and all of them come to line the villi of the small bowel. Now there's a layer um, just in between the mucosa and the muscularis called the submucosa. And this submucosa um, is filled with blood vessels and it also has what's called submucosal glands that also produce large amounts of mucus. Okay, so that's the submucosa. And then moving up from the submucosa, um, we have the muscularis. And the muscularis in the small bowel is made up of two layers. We have a longitudinal layer where we have smooth muscle cells that are um, have a longitudinal orientation that go along the length of the tube. And then we have an inner layer which is circular. So the muscle fibers here run around the lumen. Now the stomach is unique in that it has um, three layers of muscle. Everywhere else in, in the GI tract we have two layers, the longitudinal and the circular. The muscle has a third layer which is the oblique and the oblique allows for the churning. Okay, so we have longitudinal, we have circular, and then only in the stomach we have the oblique and this allows for the unique churning action of the stomach. Okay, and then uh, outside, the outside layer is the serosa, and the serosa is just made up of dense connective tissue. And underneath the serosa it is our blood vessels and nerves. Okay. Okay, so I wanted to point out um, one other aspect of the anatomy of the gut, and that is these layers of nerves. So there are two layers here, and this is the nervous system of the gut, or in the enteric nervous system. Now this is made up of two layers. There is a myenteric plexus and this myenteric plexus is on the outer layer of the longitudinal muscle and then we have the submucosal plexus. 
Now the myenteric plexus is controlling the smooth muscle of the gut, so it really is in, important for peristalsis, for directing and controlling peristalsis, and the submucosal plexus is primarily engaged with controlling secretions. Now I just want to, people to be aware that this this network of nerves is the greatest network of nerves outside of the brain and um, it is very interconnected and very complex and some people have actually called it the brain of the gut and that's because of its complexity and the complexity of its of its very coordinated actions. Okay, so that's my brief introduction of the um, GI tract anatomy and please let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and please uh, as always provide some feedback. Thank you very much.